Hey everyone, my name is Blake Ellis. I'm the Chief Engagement Officer for Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, and I want to welcome you to an afternoon of learning about the College Project. We're excited to have you here. We're excited to see um, some of y'all jumping in the chat, letting us know where you're from, what chapter, you know, what state. Um, we keep these sessions reasonably informal. So if you have a snack, that's okay. Um, we have coffee, you know, whatever you need. But um, I'm really excited about this. Oh, hey, Tammy, I bet you have better weather up in Michigan than I do. Oh, I see so many friends from places with better weather. I live in Houston and it is just hot, hot, hot. Um, so I hope you're having a little bit better weather um, in some different parts of the country. Um, but I'm super excited that we're going to be talking about the college project today. And I thought I would start off, um, as I like to do sometimes, by always relating this stuff to a student. Because when you're a PTK advisor, um, especially when you, you get in this role and you do it year after year, you may forget projects, but you remember the students, right? And so for me, when I think about the college project, I always think of a wonderful former student named Ali Fawaz. Um, he was an immigrant from Lebanon to Houston, um, and I was a brand new PTK advisor. And we were just learning. We knew very little about anything. Um, and we said, honors in action. We did a project, but we were not quite figuring it out. But college project, we're like, all right, maybe we're not going to win, but let's jump out there and let's see if we can figure out this thing called the college project. Um, and for whatever reason, Ali was so passionate about developing a mentorship program that by the time he finished with it, we had these things called duck cards because we were the ducks out at Lone Star College Sci Fair. We had some duck cards. The college president was like doing like some kind of dance associated like a Zumba or a Roomba or something. <laughs> we had we had all these things that were happening. Um, and, you know, full disclosure, um, I don't think we won anything that year. We kind of just like we did it. You know, it wasn't maybe in the rubric necessarily like the top project. But to this day, we always talk about the fun that we had um, doing that project. And all of those students that participated used that for years. Hey, Marianne, so great to see you from Oregon. Nice to see you. But um, we had, uh, you know, we still talk about the fun that we had. And those students used that opportunity to document it in their resume, to show that they had leadership skills. Um, and even the connections they made on campus then brought them further into student life um, for each of those students after the college project to finish their degrees and transfer. They faced barriers. They had parents um, maybe not being as supportive as they could. One of them went through a, a really painful divorce, but still continued on with their education. Whatever those things were, the college project helped teach them that they could do it, that they could persist in their degree. So while at Phi Theta Kappa, we have a rubric and you can be awarded at the regional level for college project, and you can win at our annual convention in Columbus. You could walk down the stage and be one of those top 50 college projects. You could use this to become the number one chapter if you're really, really good. Yes, but I always do remind you that simply doing it, submitting that, and just knowing that you did it is really the greatest reward because this is a project that will bring those students closer to the campus community. It will help them build connections with people they need to know to really build that network. And I think you'll see that the students will come to view themselves in a different way, maybe from someone that's afraid of public speaking to someone who can stand up in a crowd and talk about something that matters to them, from somebody that maybe has never organized a meeting to someone who can, maybe someone who has never even had a meeting with their administration, but now they get to know deans or VPs and faculty members that can support the work that they're doing. Um, in every way, this project, I think, really um, is important. And so we want all of y'all to be five-star chapters, which means you don't have to win, but submit college projects, submit honors in action. Um, and this is a step to doing it but I hope that you'll embrace the fun that the college project can be and the relationships that students will build uh, in the way that they'll come to see themselves. So I will turn it back over um, now, but I do just want, oh, yes, you're right. Let me introduce, because some of y'all, this may be your first time. So some of y'all have heard this before. Please know our entire student engagement team is here to support you. I'm Blake. You can always email me, blake.ellis at ptk.org. You got Susan Edwards, who is not on today because she's traveling up to the Middle States region. So if you're going to be at the Middle States region summer conference, 
just a little, just a little region up there, Patty. I've hardly heard anything about it in my life, you know, <laughs> New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. It's a very strong region, but um, she's heading up there for their summer honors and their, their five-star program. Um, Jennifer Stanford is on the call, our Associate VP of Program Implementation. No one knows more about our projects. No one knows more about college projects. So you'll hear a lot from Jennifer today. Um, we have Reagan Chastain, our curriculum designer, who is the mastermind behind our PTK Edge programs that thousands of students go through every year, earning digital badges, being awarded pins, um, and really gaining new skills and confidence. And the person I think I'm going to turn it over to, Patty Van Adder, who's our chapter outreach and development coordinator, working, and maybe I'm not turning over to you, Patty, whoever I'm turning it over to, Jennifer, okay, I'm turning it over to Jennifer, so Patty has passed the, the torch, but um, Patty is our chapter outreach and development coordinator. She's the person who really works to organize these meetings and to make sure that every single one of our almost 3,500 chapter advisors has the dedicated support that you need to lead your chapter. So please know we're here to partner with you and support you. We appreciate the work that you do. Um, and I hope you enjoyed today learning about the college project. So now I will turn it over to one of my favorite people in the world and one of the best people you could ever uh, know for all things PTK, but especially um, student engagement and community colleges, the great Jennifer Stanford. Oh, wow. All right. Thank That's you, great. Blake. No one does welcomes like Dr. Blake Ellis. So thanks very much for that. And, and this really is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So really happy to be here. We've got all advisors today of various levels. And so it's always great to kind of know your audience. And if you will use the chat to just put in there if you've uh, done a college project before or if you're brand new to the process. So if you want to, you know, however you'd like to type that seasoned, new, however, uh, it just will give me an idea of how, how uh, I should approach this. I think that we're, we're doing what we call a deep dive into the rubric. So today really is all about helping you understand what is a blueprint for college projects. It's really uh, laid out for you almost like a checklist, if you will, for uh, the college project. But before we get deeper into it, and while you're putting that information in the chat, great. Okay. Oh, lots of news. So that's good. Um, I just want to, you know, zoom back out and make sure that everyone knows that our five-star chapter plan, as Blake was refer referring to, we really do want to support your chapter in reaching that fifth level. And the college project is a very important piece of that. So it's at level four. And as you can see, all the activities that you do relate to five-star plan on a calendar year rather than an academic year. So don't stress if you're thinking, wow, it's already summer and we have not started on any of our projects, college or honors in action. You definitely have time. We have many chapters that do both projects simultaneously uh, the latter part of the year. So you are in the right place. So what is a college project? Uh, especially since we've got quite a few new advisors, we want to make sure you know that the college project is has a very specific purpose. And, you know, certainly service is one of our hallmarks. In fact, at a Kappa, we have scholarship, leadership, service and fellowship. Um, and it is about, you know, in a partnering um, project that's going to have a big part of it related to service. But the ultimate goal of a college project is really all about the relationship between the college administration and the chapter. We want that to be a very smooth uh, relationship that is a that is a considered a partnership. And so this is your chapter's opportunity. And as an advisor, you have a very special role, especially with a college project, because this is a big audience, right, for an, a project. Uh, we're, we're not just saying, hey, do a service project that is on campus or that relates to your college, but really make it a joint project. And so that means that they're not only going to be meeting with an administrator, we hope that's the college president or the campus CEO, um, but another top administrator uh, is good as well if the president is not available. But this is not only a meeting, but it's supposed to be a joint 
collaborative projects. So chances are the chapter is going to be working with other departments at your campus to carry out whatever the project's goals are. So the goals are very different uh, for a Phi Theta Kappa project in that it's not based on a PTK program. This is not an honor study topic uh, inspired project. It really is about what the college's mission and what their strategic priorities are at this moment in time. So we're gonna break down the steps for you so you know exactly how to set the chapter up for success in working with the college administration on this. And some of you um, that are brand new to this process, we want to remind all of you, though, that we do have what we call an activity guide for chapter leaders. Um, I know this is something that is pretty new. It's only a couple years old. And for those who have been advisors on staff, we, we lament the fact that we did not have this um, earlier. So it is something that not only tells you what an active Phi Theta Kappa chapter does, but it gives those uh, the, the how to carry out projects, all those things about email templates and uh, organizing a meeting with the college administrator, uh, organizing chapter meetings, you'll find sample agendas. So the focus really is about the leadership and the how to uh, be a successful leader for Phi Theta Kappa chapters. And it's accessible to anyone. It's, it's open to, of course, chapter officers, but advisors and even active members can access this. So there is a whole section about the college project, and you'll see that we have activities that are very specific to carrying out the college project. So a great resource to check out on our website if you haven't already. But as I mentioned, there is a blueprint for the college project, and it really is, um, we, we actually have designed the rubric so that it mirrors a checklist of things that you should do in order to make a project successful. Um, it's, it's true, as Blake was saying, it's not all about winning a Hallmark Award. There is so much value in walking through a college project with your students. This is an incredible leadership opportunity. We have seen so many students that have had other opportunities come their way because of working alongside college staff and faculty on this project. And so never underestimate um, the power of college projects to really transform the student's experience. And it's, it's true that we've got, uh, you know, we've kind of narrowed it to these six blocks, but I want to give this big picture look before we look at the rubrics, because uh, we don't want you to get overwhelmed, especially if you're new to this. Uh, I think it'll make more sense as we go along. But if, if you look at the first block that review the college mission and priorities, this is always done with the mind of you want the students that meet with the college administration to just have uh, done their homework, if you will, about what the mission statement is. And even better, if there is a uh, strategic plan or the strategic priorities that are listed for the college. Normally, this is on the website, and I'll show you an example of this in just a minute. But this is really important based on what the protocol is on your campus. You may already know that the college president expects more of a proposal for the chapter to make to you know, really bring their ideas in a more formal way. But most of the time, this is really an opportunity to just have a discussion with the president. And you don't want to you know, be, be caught flat footed about you know, not knowing what the priorities are for the campus. Uh, it helps the students with the conversation and it really shows that the students are committed and taking this very seriously. So that's why we say, Check that information out before you go into that meeting. And then if the president says, you know, hey, that's great. We are so happy that you are willing to help us. Um, you know, we know that college administrations support your chapter in so many ways. And so this is that opportunity for the chapter to offer their help to the college. And so, again, it's all about that relationship and that partnership uh, between the chapter and the college. And so if the president does say, you know, love to hear your ideas, then the students will be able to at least share one or two ideas to get the conversation going. 
So you know you're meeting with the administration and preferably the president, but as we said, a top administrator is okay too. Um, jointly deciding on the project and you know having a clear understanding of what the expectations are uh, as you decide on the project. It may be that the president is not going to be the one to finalize those details, that they're going to put you in contact with another department, another area on campus, and then that that's the meeting where the the um, the final objectives are decided and also a plan of action is discussed so that you're doing um, the project to the specifications of the college administration. Now, there's a, also a big part of realizing that there's probably going to be a lot for the chapter members to learn. Um, you know, maybe areas if they're working on tutoring or if they're working on um, an admissions campaign, you know, working alongside the, the college recruiters and the admissions office, there, there will be some expertise that they need. They don't have to become experts themselves, but they at least need to be able to, um, you know, have a functional knowledge of what the focus is for their project. And so there's a big emphasis on taking time to develop that knowledge and even the soft skills that are needed to carry out the project. And you'll see that in the rubrics in just a moment. And then of course, you know, things happen and there may be a, a new opportunity or an obstacle that really changes the direction of the college project. And if it was all about just the outcomes of the project itself, um, that might be more concerning to a chapter. But when you realize that this project is really about the relationship, that's the most important thing. So being flexible, realizing that um, the administration is going to appreciate a chapter's willingness to maybe change course in the middle of a project if that is what is deemed as most important. So make sure your students are prepared for that. Um, and again, it might not be an obstacle. It could be a new opportunity. And so the idea is to be working together as a team. And so that that spirit of cooperation is going to go a long way uh, when the college administration. Communication is also going to go a long way. And, you know, it's very easy to think, okay, we've had the meeting with the college administration and now we move on and, you know, they're, we're not going to follow up again. We, we've done that part, we've checked it off the list, but you do wanna have a plan to communicate throughout the project. And then of course that final report, it can be uh, your college project. Hallmark Award entry, if you would like. That can be the final report that you give, or maybe it's an email, or even better, um, a face-to-face -face meeting where the project success is shared with the administration. So, all right, so let's dive in. I want to show just an example of a, a website that shows their mission, but it also lists a lot of other great resources, and in particular, the strategic initiatives. And while I'm saying this, I just, I know um, my colleagues Reagan and Patty are keeping an eye on the chat, but just so you know, please don't hesitate to put your questions in there. Um, that's something that we can address as we go, instead of you having to wait till the end of this session to get your answers. So this is uh, the Butte College. They happen to be in California, and this is an example of their strategic initiatives. And I use this just to, so you can see that having that conversation with your students where you're looking at the college's strategic plan, it's very easy to see that there, there are several. In fact, I could argue that basically any of these initiatives lend themselves to a project focus that would make total sense for you know, scholar leaders on campus to get involved in. And we know that many times administrations are eager to have students uh, work on committees or work in other areas to you know, have that student voice on a project. And so, it's great for the advisor to be able to kind of guide that discussion before they meet with the administration so that the students are prepared and they don't overstep, but they also are, you know, confident about, you know, sharing what can be done. Now, you, of course, don't want to overpromise. That is something that is really important because, you know, if you've got this, um, 
this really high profile project and students uh, maybe get involved as the fall semester kicks up again. And you know they, they may have other responsibilities that take center stage. It's really important that you have a very serious conversation at the beginning about, hey, what, what do we think is realistic based on what the ideas are that the administration has asked us to do and then work together on that. And collaboration is going to be an important part of carrying out this project, realizing that the chapter members don't have to do everything, that they really are not only um, cooperating with the administration and other college faculty and staff, but they can also bring in other student groups to this project to carry it out and do a great job. And that's a win-win for the, the chapter as well, because they're helping spread the word about Phi Theta Kappa by working with other students uh, on campus, other organizations on campus. Okay, so preparation. This is um, the first kind of the foundational piece of a college project and the rubrics of course start here. We've talked about most of these. Um, one of the things that I will highlight that we see kind of missing when a chapter goes to write up their entry is that they, they may have a tendency to parrot these um, rubrics. And so you really wanna you know, think about the showing as well as telling. So having that evidence uh, and not just saying, you know, we looked at the mission statement and then we met with the administration, but you know, really give some more details so that it's clear that the chapter has done this. Um, and it's also true that a lot of times, even though the project can be on anything that relates to the mission or priorities, it's really important for the chapter to explain how the project is related to the college's mission and don't just assume um, that we will know that. So that's you know really uh, key to have all of the participants, even if it's just two or three, believe me, we have award-winning college projects that have been fulfilled by just a couple of members for a chapter. So please don't be discouraged if you only have a couple of active members right now. Um, we have, you know, chapters that are very large and have, you know, a, a large officer team working on projects, but there is not a mandate that you have to have more than two active members in order to have uh, an outstanding college project. So make sure that those members that are working on the project and even their co collaborators that, that they're, you know, journaling, they're taking notes about the details as they go through this project, because that's really going to save you when it comes time, not only to write a college project entry, but also to, to share uh, with the college administration. They will be very impressed with what all went into uh, this project. Hey, Jennifer, there was a question about okay. um, in, in the chat. What are some common examples of evidence that have been provided in the past for the preparation component? Sure, that is a great question, Heidi. So a lot of that is, you know, just giving uh, an example of maybe a, a discussion point or revelation that was made as they looked, as the chapter as a whole looked at the priorities of the college. Um, you know, it's always great to to not just, you know, say that we, you know, we checked it off, but what were the takeaways from that? And you don't have to spend a lot of time. It doesn't mean you have to spend two paragraphs on this, but that's one example of a way to say that to write about, you know, that you've reviewed the college's mission statement. But as I showed on that previous slide, you know, what was a priority maybe that caught the eye of the chapter leaders that that really sparked their interest the most? So, you know, those kind of details can really help bring it to life. And, and that's what we're talking about. And when the, the project is decided upon, you know, saying why the administration out of all the things that they could have asked the chapter to focus on, why why was this particular goal so important? And so that can be related to, you know, maybe they they have a, a review and uh, coming up. Um, you know, maybe they've got uh, an anniversary event, and so they've asked the chapter to very specifically work with their events department or their public relations office on um, celebrating the the college's upcoming anniversary. So those kind of details are really important. And that's what we're talking about when we say, you know, the evidence of these rubrics. 
do uh, copies of meeting notes qualify? Um, well, you're not going to necessarily be, you know, sharing that, but what we want is, or what we recommend as a best practice is that if you've had more than one person taking notes about the whole process, um, that's going to give you that kind of rich detail to include in the entry. Those different perspectives will really uh, be important. Thank you, Reagan. Yes, we have a, if you go to, this is the uh, very specific web page, um, but if you don't remember that after the call, just uh, ptk.org slash hallmarks, and it will get you to all the information about our Hallmark Award categories, which includes college project that we're talking about, as well as the honors in action project and all those individual awards that we have as part of our recognition program. Okay, I think, Patty, was there any other question that I didn't see? We're good? Okay. No, we're All fine. right, so uh, moving on to leadership development. Again, this is an area where it's easy for a chapter to kind of overlook that this is intentional leadership development. It's not just about learning as you do, which is um, true. We do learn as we carry out a leadership role, but we do a better job if we've taken time to learn or strengthen our soft skills or other areas of knowledge or growth that we need in order to do a really good job. So, you know, yes, there will be trial and error, but um, it's if you've planned appropriately, hopefully those those errors will be less and less. And so that's what we we preach is that we want chapters to, you know, search out those experts to get the information that they need to uh, help give them uh, some tips on how to go about making this project as um, conducted as smoothly as possible because you do have limited time. Uh, you don't want to spend months spinning your wheels if there was a shortcut that somebody else uh, in the know uh, could help you out with. And so those are the important parts of leadership development. And then it's also really important to Think about the, you know, when you talk about strategic thinking and carrying out the project, part of that is helping students understand that when we say strategic thinking, all we're talking about is really mapping out, you know, where we are now, where we want, want to be and how we're going to get there, you know, whether that's the collaborators that we're going to uh, work with and why we've chosen those particular collaborators, um, the skills that we're, we're um developing and strengthening as we go through this. Uh, certainly, these are just a few of the areas that uh, a chapter is going to strengthen as they go through really any Phi Theta Kappa project, um, but college project in particular. Um, so we want them to, to share those details about, you know, how did they decide, you know, what their communication methods were going to be with those on the leadership team, especially if you've got outside collaborators to the chapter, you know, there's, there's going to be some uh, logistics that need to be worked out, and those are the kind of details that shouldn't be left out. They, that's, that's going to show um, the chapter's thought process, and it's also going to show their work ethic as well in, in conducting this project. And then don't forget that um, we offer a lot of uh, great courses, on, especially on soft skills with our Competitive Edge course in PTK Edge. You see the login right there. And all of these are available to advisors as well as, as members. So don't forget, if you want to check this stuff out, you have access to it with your PTK uh, username and password as well. And then we have our own separate leadership development studies course. You see the URL there. You know, that's a great thing to maybe go through with your chapter officers. Again, these are free to fight that Kappa members. And so those are resources that you can use. And then certainly your resources on campus, uh, regional events. I know we've done um, the staff have done quite a few Zoom sessions. Even this summer, we've, we've started to get back in person to regional meetings, uh, and they have a lot of workshops and uh, training on PTK programs and leadership development that you certainly can use and write about um, on the leadership development question that have helped your chapter fulfill a, project, a college project. Okay. So keeping an eye on the chat too, but I'm going to move on to communication 
and cooperative effort. So as I said, this really is important for the chapter, especially, you know, if you're, you know, again, right now, they may have a little more free time than they will if they are not um, taking summer classes uh, when they go back in the fall. And so it's important for them to really think about, you know, how they can get more done by delegating and reaching out to others to work on this project. And so working smarter instead of harder, that's really the focus. And so those, as I mentioned before, the reasons behind why certain um, departments or organizations on campus or even in the community were chosen as partners. That's really good for um, the explanation of that, not to just do a list of who the chapter partnered with and really, you know, focused on, again, the communication methods, you know, showing that that forethought of, okay, how do we organize this when everyone, you know, maybe, maybe you're still doing a lot of online work, maybe you've um, not fully gone back uh, to the uh, full on campus schedule that you've had in the past. So what are going to be your apps that you use? Are you going to use Discord? Are you going to use uh, maybe Slack or just email. Maybe it's something on your LMS that is going to be used uh, for the chapter to communicate. So those kind of, again, that's what we're looking for is the communication methods and then always bringing it back to what the focus of, you know, those objectives for this project are. Um, you know, how did uh, your cooperative efforts move the needle forward uh, or move the needle on getting you to uh, accomplish the goals of the project. All right. Okay. So um, the last big category for uh, the college project rubric is impact. And this is, this is something that you do have to plan ahead for, right? You don't want to wait to the end uh, because you, you have to have mechanisms in place to really gather that kind of data. And it's not just quantitative data, those measurable things, but it's also qualitative data. And I'll show you an example of um, how other chapters have done that. But just generally speaking, it's going to be, you know, any kind of quantitative data, anything that you can measure. And I'll go ahead and put this up. I think it'll help with this discussion on the quantifying accomplishments because, you know, it's easy to think about, you know, if you've done a video project, you know, you may not only, you know, talk about the hours spent editing the video, the hours spent shooting the video and then editing, I should say, uh, but also, you know, how many people were involved and really understanding that, you know, this is a, a good example of, you know, really kind of a, in a resume oriented uh, mindset of how to really quantify something that will give those numbers and make it more impressive than just saying, hey, we were responsible for chairing the student event promotional committee, but, you know, really looking for ways to get to those numbers uh, that explains the scope of what that entailed. And so for the qualitative, you're also going to be, you know, looking for really the, a survey that would have comments. Uh, you're also including references to things that were observed by the members and other participants. You know, it can be, you know, realizing those aha moments that a member or a fellow collaborator had or someone that was the recipient of the, the college projects. For example, if you were doing a tutoring project, you might, you know, have someone interview or do a survey of those students that participated in that uh, tutoring or peer mentoring um, benefit that was offered as part of the project. And so those are the kind of things that you can use for the qualitative impact. And this is an example of a chapter. It was uh, from 2020, but this was our, our fellow, our, our former most distinguished chapter. And they were talking about the students that were part of this Horizons program that um, was a separate program on campus for those that had um, learning differences. 
And they they did a survey for them after the the end of the project, and they got some really great quotes. And they also uh, had a photo that they included in their entry. And you are allowed up to three optional attachments. Um, you know, again, it is optional, so you're not counted off if you don't include pictures. But you can use a table or graph if that helps. Uh, kind of show the evidence of your college project, or you can also upload a picture. So that's, and we love getting pictures, by the way. So please consider that and have someone that, you know, is maybe has that responsibility as you go through the project this year to take pictures. So I hope that that helps with the idea of, um, you know, really thinking ahead of how you're going to capture both those measurable items as well as the more qualitative or observations um, that are made. And then one of the biggest um, things that we, we see chapters struggle with is really having um, evidence of how chapter members grew in professionalism and just as scholar leaders throughout the project. Again, it's easy to just repeat that rubric back, um, but you want to have an example of that. And whether that was someone who, you know, maybe changed their major because of a project's impact on them. Um, maybe it, it opened their eyes to a particular need. We've had chapters that have um, been involved in establishing or helping uh, continue a campus food pantry. And, you know, you may have students that are really, you know, uh, shielded from that need that they that their fellow college students have and so that's something that you can you can share you know get the students to really talk about that and then that's something that will will certainly qualify not only as qualitative feedback but it also helps address that part of the rubric about how the members themselves grew uh, as part of their leadership roles in this project. And then there is a whole separate question for the chapter to answer on how the chapter's relationship with the college was strengthened. So, you know, you have a, a question that asks about the outcomes, but we found that chapters really were not uh, honing in on, again, what the main purpose is for the college project. And that's all about that relationship. And so we made it a separate question so that they wouldn't forget that that's, that's what um, the, you know, the ultimate purpose of this uh, endeavor really is. And so we want that. And again, you know, maybe it's a comment the, the college president made after the final report is presented. Um, you know, maybe it's, it's sharing other administrators or another staff or our faculty member what their reaction was to working with the chapter on this college project. So there, there are ways to do that. And again, using those same mechanisms that you've used in the quantitative and especially qualitative data tracking is going to probably be um, you know, the best way to get the, the information for this particular question. All right, so I think we're, we're pretty much at the end. Um, presentation is the last rubric. This is true of every homework award entry uh, where the, we give points for you know, just the spelling and grammar and how the, the entry was written. Is it easy to follow? Uh, five points may not sound like a lot, but it certainly can make a difference when the competition is so fierce, and it certainly is in our homework awards competitions. So, you know, just one point can keep you from being uh, in the winner circle or not. So that's that's a very important thing. And again, when you consider that Phi Theta Kappa's programs are all about that professional and personal development of our students, um, it's no different with writing for the college or for the Hallmark Award entries. That is such an essential skill. And it is, you know, not only the writing, but the editing and proofreading parts of it. And so those are great ways to bring in other members that maybe, you know, join later in the fall. And so they didn't have that opportunity to participate in the project itself, but they can still play a role at the end with um, helping with uh, the spelling or with the proofing of the college project entry. All right, so what questions, what are muddiest points that we haven't um, fully explained 
we are open to your feedback and questions. Oh yes, and Reagan, thank you so much, because I meant to say that earlier on, but I know that it's always great when you can see examples of uh, past award-winning entries, and we do have a journal for uh, change called Change Makers that features college project entries. It's not all of the top 50, but we do select usually about 15 or so that we share. We've got last year's journal is already up there. So the 2021 uh, award winners, and we are working on the 2022 version right now that comes out in early fall. So you'll be able to see that, uh, but definitely check that out. That is uh, an important resource. Okay, Heidi's got a question. Can meeting with directors or chairpersons qualify as meeting with college administration? Um, directors, yes. Uh, Heidi, what I would say is that the chapter, you know, you need to follow the campus protocol and, you know, based on what's going on on your campus, if it's, um, if they've been directed to meet with someone in particular, then that should just be explained in the entry. And so, you know, again, we, we want it to be someone who is in administration. It's always great when it can be uh, if not the president, a vice president or a dean, um, but the hierarchy on a campus is going to be different. Uh, and so it's important for them to explain, you know, what this person's role is and why this person in particular uh, was the person they met with. So just, you know, keep track of those details. But that's a great question. And again, we know that, you know, an advisor has such a critical role in helping a chapter um, understand, you know, what the protocol is on your campus. You know, some of them, it can even be, you know, hey, we want to have, invite the president to come to a chapter meeting and have a, you know, discussion, maybe have um, a meal, you know, like a lunch discussion. That may be a, a perfect idea for one campus, whereas another campus, that would not work at all. That would be a non-starter. So it really is up to you. Um, if the advisor feels like that it's best for maybe the president and one other officer to meet with the president along with having the advisor present. It may be that the advisor thinks that it's better for them to just have the, the one or two members um, at that meeting. That's, that is up to your discretion and you know what works best for your college. All right, any others? And if you've already done um, your college project or you're wrapping it up, um, that is really a best practice too, to kind of get that one uh, done in the first half of the year and then spend the rest of the year on honors in action, or you can flip the two. Um, most chapters, especially since we just introduced the new honors study topic in the spring, most chapters will, if they are going to divide it up, they'll do college project in the spring and then the rest of the year with honors in action. Jennifer, I'll, I'll take the next question. Yeah, okay. Ashante, I'll reach out to you and we can set up a time where we can chat, um, Ashante. So I'll email you right after this. And then also, I also wanted to to say before we end, for all the advisors that are here that are brand new, under two years of service, we're going to do this again. Um, next week and if you haven't had the chance to um, register for the new advisor development program I'm going to put a link in the chat that will take you to our chapter development page and you'll see a registration link for new advisors there um, and also on that page you'll be able to find past recordings of sessions that you can use as a resource um, you know when as you're planning or also with your chapter members as well so Check out that page, but I will follow back up with you, Ashante, after the, you know, a little later after the meeting today. Yes, and that that is that resource because we, um, you know, the college project. I will say um, this: the Hallmark Awards. We we present them at the spring, you know, our PTK Catalyst Annual Convention. And then we do have um, a, a committee that meets at headquarters about the, if there are any changes or any tweaks that we need to make to the rubrics. We have not made any major changes and we have just posted um, the latest version of the rubrics that are mainly just 
updated documents with the, the new deadline. So if you're um, setting a calendar, January 18th is when the college project and honors in action entries are due. We space out the Hallmark Award entry deadlines so that it's not everything due on the same date. Uh, for example, in the in December, we have administrator awards. Those are due on December 7th. And then we have categories for advisors, officers, and members. And those are due, uh, let's see, January 11th. So those, you know, we space those out. We're going to have sessions that uh, do a much deeper dive on all of our homework awards later this fall. But we just want you to be aware of that, that everything really is working together. Uh, you know, Five Star Plan directs you to do these projects. And then homework awards is another way for you to, you know, have that reflection piece, but also have that opportunity for additional recognition of your chapter's hard work. So, uh, again, we, we know that this can be a lot, especially if you're new to Phi Theta Kappa, and this will be a great plug, uh, especially since uh, I just looked over at Reagan to talk about the advisor edge. We have a curriculum for all advisors, but in particular new advisors that will take you through the steps of what it means and what it looks like to be a chapter advisor. So definitely take advantage of that. and. I'm going to put, it's five-star advisor still, right? Advisor.ptk.org for our advisor training. I'm putting that in the chat. And if you're brand new, we highly recommend that. So that can, you know, that's their self-paced, on-demand, when you have time, um, and uh, they're we definitely recognize advisors that go through that course. It doesn't take very long, but we, we want to recognize you for, for taking the time to go through it and uh, kind of give a shout out to your college president on your behalf that you did become, um, what I like to say, a certified Phi Theta Kappa advisor. I think, I think we refer to it differently. I know Patty makes a, a big splash about it too on our Fight the Kappa Advisors Facebook page. All right, any other questions? I mean, even if it's not about college project, we've got several headquarters staff here. So if you do have another question, let us know. Oh, there you go. That's right, Patty. If you're not already on the Facebook page for advisors, please sign up. We are happy to, it's a great uh, networking site for advisors. You can ask not only staff that are on there, but also other advisors. So, all right, we're really excited. Thank you guys so much for spending, especially a summer afternoon with us. We really do appreciate that and know that you have plenty to keep you busy or just if you're like us in the, in the Southern region, although I think it's happening in more places than just the South now, it's a uh, wicked heat. And so we're all just trying to stay cool at the moment. All right, well, Patty, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you. Well, thanks again, everybody for coming. We will get a copy. We'll send you an email probably tomorrow that has a link to, to review this session and also the PowerPoint. And then it takes about a week for it to appear on the chapter development page. So be on the lookout for those two things. Um, for those of you that are going to join us for the new advisor session, we'll send that link out on Monday, Tuesday of next week. And we hope to see you there. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.